Uh, my name is Chad. Welcome to Swamp Fox. This is our ranch out here in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I'm going to be talking about our solar setup. Uh, the very first thing I recommend for anyone in solar is figure out what you need to plug in. Um, everything I look at a year later after doing all of this is how many amps, how many watts, what's it going to take, what's the draw, is it daytime or nighttime use. That is, uh, those are the big factors in solar that I can't stress enough. So the first thing you want to do is find yourself a calculator that will tell you which appliances draw what kind of power and that's going to help you kind of build the power you need to kind of run the things that you want. So for us, we wanted a washer and a dryer. We wanted to feel as normal as possible out here in the middle of nowhere. Um, and then add a couple of things like, you know, an air conditioner because it gets about 100 degrees up here in the, in the summer. Hard to believe with all this snow around, but it can get 100 up here. Um, and, uh, and several other items. Uh, and then there were a few things we decided we just needed to do away with. So we don't own a microwave. We got rid of that. We have no intention of ever owning one. Um, and so you just kind of have to decide what you want to use. And then from there, you can build out your system. The other thing I'd recommend is make sure that you can add to the system without having to reinvest a ton of money. Uh, there's really three main components to a system, your panels, uh, and then your uh, inverter, your power supply, everything that kind of controls the system, and then your batteries is kind of the third big expense. Um, and then from there, you can kind of work with an engineer or somebody to help you determine if you want a 12 volt, 24 volt, or 48 volt system, which also determines how many amps you can push. So we went with a 48 volt, for instance, which is the biggest system you can, you can uh, install. And the reason for that is so that we can run a, a, a dryer, an electric dryer, which you know helps us out with you know washing clothes. Uh, so for our system, we went with panels in series. The, each of these three panels pushes one uh, photovoltaic or PV wire uh, into uh, a box right here. And then that box pushes all of the electricity under the ground here into an electric shed, which I'm sure we'll show you here in a bit. Uh, there's also a lightning arrestor. It's kind of hard to see. We could probably show you still, but uh, lightning is, is a big deal in northern Arizona. We have monsoon season. You may have seen um, our giant haboobs on TV, which are giant sandstorms, uh, but they bring in a lot of wind and lightning. Uh, so there's a few things you have to do in order to build your solar system or your solar array to stand up to that kind of, uh, that kind of mother nature. So, uh, so I have a lightning arrestor in here probably should have another lightning arrestor inside of my electrical components, uh, but I haven't purchased that and put it in yet. Uh, the other thing is uh, you can kind of see these little, these little piers down here full of concrete. Uh, each post is covered by about 2,000 pounds of concrete. Uh, so there's 8,000 or four tons basically securing this entire sail from our monsoon season. Uh, so, cause, uh, cause again, the winds could come in and just kind of pick this thing up like a sail if you don't have something secure. Uh, so, so that, that was kind of the, the build for it is, you know, start with the concrete, put your pipes in. Um, everything is built with schedule 40 steel piping, which is, uh, really almost unbreakable. Uh, and that kind of runs underneath and then underneath that, and we can zoom in and show you some of that as well. We're using, uh, unistruts which is generally reserved for like commercial buildings and electric, but they hold so much weight uh, that I was able to run them up along the, the bottom side. And then I'll point out that we're grounded here with copper. We're grounded on the other side with copper. The unit itself is grounded. And then where the electric is running is grounded again because of lightning. <laughs> I can't stress enough how much I don't want to be struck. Number one, number two, a lightning strike could absolutely tear everything down and you're starting over. So, um, so those are kind of the, uh, the things to think about in the beginning. I love that part. Uh, so we are inside of the electrical shed, uh, which we pretty much had to build to hold all of the, uh, the important stuff to make everything work. Uh, so I'll show you this, this component here. What, uh, what we did was we went with a company who actually pre-built the individual pieces that you need to, uh, to pull the power and then convert it. It's actually inverting it from DC to AC. Um, and so I'll show you kind of the indiv individual parts of it and how it works. Um, but I will tell you, um, in my experience and what the, you know, the research that we did, 
buying these pieces separately versus having a, a good solar firm build them together, it's actually more expensive, um, oddly enough. So, because um, I fought against it originally, like, oh, I'll do it myself and save money. Nope. Uh, the engineers know what they're doing. <laughs> if they if they offer you a system that's complete, take it. Um, the other side too is if one piece goes out in this system, I can replace that one piece. Uh, but they all have a pretty good warranty, so no worries. Uh, so um, in here, this is kind of the this is kind of the control, and I'll pop this off and give you a, a look. So this is where you come in and tell it what your system is, and then it will kind of report back to you how well it's doing. So it's, it's tough to see, we'll give you some close-ups here, uh, but this is showing right now at, I think it's about noon, um, a little wispy out, not, not completely clear skies. We're generating about, generating about 800 watts, and we're using about 200 right now inside of our house. <clears throat> Um, and what's neat about the system is it, it continually keeps these batteries charged up, right? So I use about 15% of the total uh, batteries overnight, and then this will start charging. As soon as the sun hits it, it tries to fill them as best possible. And then when it gets to about 92%, it starts to trickle them. And you can see down here, it says absorbing. So this system will actually control what's happening with the batteries. Uh, and then this kind of tells you what it is. So absorbing means it's like a trickle charge, so we can get it all the way back to 100%. And what's nice about these particular batteries is they're Rolls, it's a Canadian company. It's all virgin lead, so that it's not recycled. Uh, what that means is basically you have about 25 years on the batteries, which match the panels. Most panels have a 25 year warranty. Um, after about 10 years, they do like a prorated thing, but 10 years is a lot for a battery. So I'm a big fan of Rolls, R-O-L-L-S. Um, and in their batteries. And these are all, we'll give you a close up, but they're all six volt battery, six volt batteries. So they'll run uh, like, uh, um, like golf carts um, in massive, you know, but they won't start your engine. They don't have the cranking power. They have the lasting power. Um, anyway, and then this is actually the inverter. So all the electric comes in and you can kind of see my batteries, my black, these thick double lot cables here. Um, these are my battery positive and negatives. You can see my ground in here, and then you can see this is a photovoltaic that comes from the panels in. That's a positive. The negative comes in here. It's a different place so that the entire system can communicate and actually pulls all the photovoltaic in, converts it over here. You can see I've got a plug. This is a 110. It runs my trailer. Um, I can get about 20 amps out of that before any issues. I have broke and get popped it before. Um, and then I have wires back here that we can kind of zoom in on and show you. Um, basically, the, the, the power is all up in here and it's all protected. I'm not going to open it up, but it would probably kill me if I touched it. Um, I can take my, po my positive and negative bars up here and run them out to a completely new uh, sort of circuit box for a different building. And, and you can kind of move the power. Again, it converts inverts from DC to AC in here and then I can push it and use it in multiple places. Um, and it's just, it's really handy. Um, you've got these little events here. These are basically alerts. So if the batteries drop below 60%, it kind of warns you because then you want to like fire up your generator um, or, you know, get your panels into the sun or stop using power or whatever. Once they get down below 50%, it's designed to actually shut it off so you don't kill your batteries. Um, the investment in the, in, in the whole system for us, aside from the array, the, um, you know, the wires, the, um, the, the whole platform that we built, all of that is, a, is close to $10,000. So half of it is this system, is the brains that keeps everything alive. Uh, the batteries themselves, I have eight batteries here. If you do the math, eight batteries at six volts a piece is 48, which is why we have a 48 volt system. Um, and the way they're wired, and we can kind of explain it to you, is you wind up getting 48 volts across eight batteries, and then it pushes a higher amperage so you can get longer lasting power essentially. So if my sun, sun goes away, Right, if it's a cloudy day, I can still run my washing machine at five or 800 watts because these batteries will hold enough. Uh, the batteries themselves run about 250 to 280 uh, per battery, um, which sounds terrible until you can figure, you know, uh, a 10 grand in electric costs over 10 years or 25 years. You know, you divide that down, it's way cheaper than my electric bill ever was living in Phoenix. Um, and then, uh, and then of course the wires separately. And, and, um, if you talk to a good engineer, they'll tell you always buy fatter wires than you need. And the reason is, is because resistance, you've probably heard of resistors, uh, as electric runs through and it heats up, it starts to reduce the power. So the fatter the wires, 
you know, and the longer that if you have a long run like we do, in case we get struck by lightning, it's away from where we live, um, you get all of the power that you're looking for. So you can get each panel will run 120, which is basically a 120 or a 110 in your house and about 15 amps. And you can use an electric box and standard electric circuits. And we'll show you that in a second um, to uh, to determine sort of your how much power you're going to run off of each one. So um, just like an electrician on the inside, but all of this stuff is pretty, is pretty different. <laughs> so, uh, so you'll see a little bit of insulation around here. A big misconception that everybody has is that cold is bad for batteries. You can certainly, you know, 50 below zero, you can freeze your batteries up, um, but heat is much, much worse. So all of this insulation that you're seeing in here is actually designed to keep the heat out in the summer. We've had zero problems this winter. We've had six degree temperatures. We've had, you know, in the, in the teens for days in a row and the batteries are just fine. It's the heat that you have to worry about. So if you build something like this, absolutely insulate it and keep that sun off of your stuff. Your batteries will last much longer. Um, so this is an example of being able to kind of take the wires that I've shown you earlier and take the, the hots and the, and the ground and the negative and run them down. They all run underground and up into here. And then again, um, I have wires. I also have um, copper down here. So I am grounded again in this location. So I can't stress enough. <laughs> Grounding is important. Um, so really quick, it's just kind of a small um, electrical box like you would have in your house. And I would recommend um, you know, go find yourself an electrician, look up your local code. There's all sorts of rules and regulations when it comes to electricity because you really could kill yourself even with solar. seems like it's not a big deal because they're batteries, but they, they pack a punch and they will, they will get you. Um, and so what I did is I, I wired, uh, this is a bathhouse. Um, it's kind of a shower, sinks, uh, bathroom, laundry for us. And, uh, and what I did was just uh, ran circuits for it. So one of them is completely off because I, I'm leaving this one uh, empty for another use later. Uh, but what I have in here is the entire, uh, this is a 20 amp circuit that's running all of the electric in there. Uh, and then I have a 30 amp that's running our dryer. The dryer is on its own piece. And so what happens with that is there's actually a, um, there's two hots and a negative and a ground for, every, for, for this particular piece. Everything else is one hot because it's a one, 120 coming in. Because it's a dryer, it needs to have the power to tumble and the power to heat. So each of these is 120. So there were two separate wires coming out of there. There was a red and a black, which represent the hots. One goes to the top bar, one goes to the bottom bar. And then that all runs on a four-way Romex, which is basically two hots, a, a, a neutral and a ground, which run through to our dryer. And then again, everything else in there is just a standard, it's a standard plug. So uh, what's nice is I have little USB outlets. I've got standard outlets. I can plug anything. I also have a wonderful seat warming <laughs> toilet, <laughs> which needs power <laughs> all day and all night long. Uh, so again, it's kind of like, like, like you would have in your house, but instead of a million circuits, I just have the four that I need for the building. So that's, uh, that's a quick summary of our solar. It works great for us. Like I said before, it's expandable. We'll probably add um, two more sets of three panels, uh, which will give us enough to run a whole cabin. Uh, it's, pretty, um, it's pretty exciting to be able to, uh, to have that potential. And, uh, you know, we haven't had any issues with it so far. So, um, you know, check us out on the link below. We're, we're Swamp Fox and uh, love to, you know, share this journey with you guys if you want to check it out.